Alrighty, friends, we are out of the friend zone and into the end zone. We are working with flatware, sterling silver flatware that I get from my buddy down the street, uh, Chuck. He sends this off to get turned into ingots, and sometimes he sells me some, and I turn it into cool jewelry. So we're going to do a fork project today. Uh, I have done one of these before, and... I don't remember exactly how I did it, but I'm going to do my, my very best. I remember when I did that project, I was planning on bending these to make them smaller so I could fit them into my crucible. And what I did was I just separated these, pr these uh, prongs a little bit. By the way, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Hit like on the way out, most definitely. Uh, we're over here doing jewelry adventures quite often. And uh, it's kind of the way we roll around here, friends. So I'm going to just kind of separate this uh, a little bit. Uh, we're going to go... Well, actually, I fit this. If you're going to be dumb, you got to be tough. I'm just going to hold it, and then I'm just going to just let it go. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. And just roll it. If it messes up its orientation a little bit, don't get too concerned about that. Okay, this is hard. You can use your flat nose right here, I guess. Well... Go this right here a little bit, bring it in. Let's go right here a little bit. Keep the handle on it so you can grip it. I'm just gonna give it another one. I'm just gonna bend these out a little bit. I'm gonna go back to my big boys and we're just gonna do it again. Wait, wait, do I want these? Maybe I want these to go in. Gosh dang. Now oh, I'm all jacking it. Now I'm gonna break it. Do I need to kneel that? Anybody, does anybody know? Let's put this, let's uh, put this out like that. Maybe like this. Oh shit, that did break. I should have, that did break right there, guys. Lesson learned. It's not as cool. Well, live and learn. There's two of them I've screwed up so far. Man, look at this one. I did that like no problem. I ruined two, I haven't done that. Uh, I don't know how I got lucky uh, doing that first one, but uh, this is one that I have that I actually cut the handle off for something else or to melt down. And I saved this because I was planning on doing another tut tutorial on that, uh, that piece. So uh, I think it's important that uh, I give it another shot, guys. Um, oh, by the way, I annealed this. I annealed this so that we don't have breakage. Things don't go our way. Okay, go there. I'm gonna go right here. Much easier once it's annealed, by the way, friends. And then we're gonna separate these two, just with our fingers. Inside job on these bad boys. I don't know if that was too much, but we're gonna give it a shot. Okay, we got some action here. Now we're gonna go. What I didn't do on my other ones was. Now we're just gonna go right here. I'm gonna keep. Uh, just on the tips, guys. Okay. Now I have those. I'm going to go ahead and bring these back out to separate them. And let's go, let's go little ones in here, guys. Just for S&Gs. Towards. And then we're going to go in. Twist it in and then towards the body of this right here. Towards the body. <clears throat> so now that's what we have right here, guys. That I have something I can kind of work with. What I'm going to do for good measure is I'm going to anneal this so that I don't have any issues because I don't, I'm, I'm sure it's still kind of annealed right here and I'm not really going to put any more on the tips, but. And it's a little hard because I don't have the full handle, and that's why I recommend, if you can, keep the handles intact. Okay, so I have a little something there. I might have to loosen this bad boy up because this uh, is going... Can you guys see that? It's overlapped quite a bit. This one's pretty good. This one's overlapped quite a bit, and I think I feel if I pull it out, then I might break it, and I don't want to have another error. So let's anneal this one more time at the tips. 
All right, guys, we got a little bit of annihilation happening, happened, we annealed. And now we're gonna go to our semi-polished block here. Guys, I got this block at Hobby Lobby. I can't remember how much it was, about 10 bucks. And I use it all the time. And uh, I've, I've, I've messed it up and uh, I don't know how to polish it. So if anybody has any links or tips that they can send how to polish, repolish stuff like this, I will definitely watch it. Or I'll just have to buy another one, I guess. With the economy the way it is, any dollar you can save, you might need it for gas. The Quadrupus. This is the an official Quadrupus. If you have like a little area that you would like to have kind of put in, you can find a little piece of wood. I recommend wood and just kind of needle nose pliers to do a little fat finagulation. I want to put solder solder I want to put some solder here I want to put some solder here and I want to put some solder possibly maybe once I get this kind of touching maybe here there we go there we go I think this is going to be our front because I like the way this kind of grooves up so this will be our front face this will be at the back of our face before we get too froggy with this let's boom this let's boom the back and you guys have seen me do that. Let's make it as fast as we can. Not phony baloney. All right, we got everything bent. We haven't done any cleanup at all, but I'm gonna go ahead and get this this top part of the of it nice and flat. And then what I'm going to do is make a mark right here and just imagine um, a little rectangle-ish kind of line here I don't know if that's gonna be big enough I think it would be nice if it was just a little bit maybe I'll cut this and go like this you might want to wash your finger before you lick it but sometimes when you're in a pinch let's put it down here a little bit so it can be a little bit wider and then this part I'll cut off. So I'm going to cut that much of the top off. So I have a, a wide angle there so I can put my bale. Okay, friends, we're at this spot. I uh, trimmed it down a little bit shorter and kind of just roughly rounded it out with my flat file. Now I'm going to use a screw. This is just a regular drywall screw, I think. And uh, I think it's a drywall screw, very pointy. And I'm going to just give myself a little lead hole and I'm going to drive uh, my drill right through that zzz, off my flex shaft and put a hole in it and then use my saw to saw that out. I'll bring you guys right back. Okay, I have drilled through it. Guys, uh, just to let you know, I used a drill bit that I bought at Harbor Freight. And the key is to go slow. Push your pedal slowly and, and, and you'll see the threads of the material come up. If you're going too fast, it'll just start to glide on itself. You can use wax, candle wax, on the end of your uh, drill blade. And you can use candle wax also to lube your saw blade when you're doing saw work, guys. It doesn't have to be the, the product that you buy from Rio or the product you can buy online. You can use regular candle wax. I have, I have and I have no problems with it. It works just great. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah sometimes in these hard times, you just got to do what's cheap, friends. All right, guys, I sawed it out. Has been sawed out. And I'm just kind of shoring up this little right in here, if you guys can see that. Just kind of shoring that up. And that's where the bale is going to hook right into that. So now I'm going to go through these little areas and kind of fine tune with my uh, half, with my half round flat on one side half round on the other side file i bought these at harbor freight guys for 3.99 i got a whole pack and it is worth it just for this one right here this is my workhorse uh this is what it looks like harbor freight yeah buddy boy this is what's in there three dollars and 99 cents guys and it's worth it just for this one right here but uh, these other ones are also very handy so don't be shy, stay fly. Uh, just gonna work on this a little bit. Kind of boring to watch, 
and every one is going to be a little bit different based on your ability to use your pliers and the bending process but give yourself grace and try to think ahead and not uh, grip it in too many different places so that it doesn't create more work for you in the back end all right for this stone we're going to use kingman turquoise old stock 9.5 carats uh, this is from Noble Art Dimensions. This is the stone. Take a quick, beautiful look at that. Gosh, dang it, friends. That's going to be purdy. It's going to fit right there. Heck, boy. This is hand poured. 999. I should be able to fit it around there. We're going to try it. You know me. I like to put my seam on a flat end if possible. And... This, has a, this stone has a beautiful slope to it, so it will be very easy to uh, cup the stone. The stone will be very secure in there. You guys know how I do it. I, you guys know I want to get sponsored by Sharpie because I am a strong proponent of these, these, uh, these markers that you can just easily click the click it open and close i love the fine tip it's perfect it's perfect all right guys we're going right here don't chop your finger off put the fine silver there i store my fine silver scraps in a separate container now we're just going to look and make sure that we're still sitting nice usually i i always have at least an extra millimeter to cut off but i like to leave a millimeter uh because you know you eventually you're gonna want to file these flats nice and flat and it's gonna take some material off so I'm gonna get this prepared and we'll get ready to set this bezel okay you crazy winos out there this is where we're at dudes you guys know how I do this so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put some hard solder right there make our dreams come true give it a little overbend so it has a little tension and wants to kiss each other Throw some hard solder on there and bring you right back. If you think for one second that I'm going to invite you to the party and not drop the location, you would be wrong, friends. I am not going to hold out on you guys. Sometimes some of us are not, uh, don't see a lot of this, and some of us are new, and we take for granted some of this old knowledge that we have. Flux mess there. Okay, now we're going to cook the flux off, guys, and you know how we do it with the bezels. We always use hard solder on our bezels uh i'm not an absolutist i'm not the type of person that likes to say always or never friends so just know that it's uncomfortable for me to say always but with bezels guys always always use hard solder on your bezel cups okay guys right here we're gonna feather it we'll see it you'll see it get both sides hot at the same time so the solder doesn't favor one side over the other and boom voila Let's go over here and see if we can get a little bit of that solder to come float this way. And we did. And I'm feeling pretty good about that. Sometimes it's that easy. Sometimes it's difficult. You never know what the jewelry gods are going to give you that day. Let's take a quick gander up close so you guys can see. Yeah, we're there. You know, you know how it is. You got to clean that off. Um, but I like to do my on the outside so that I can easily have access to <laughs> clean it off right there. And I don't have any clumpage on the underneath that's going to affect the way that it hugs around the stone. So let's put it down on the genius wire and just see what the action looks like. Can you guys see that? I'm looking with my algal eyes and I see a little, some air underneath. So this is going to have to have some kind of shapage to it, but I don't know how flat it is. Once I put it on, the, oh yeah, it's not flat. So when it's like this, guys, I'm going to put this over here, but I'm going to hit it lightly with my mallet and where we're at now i'm going to put it back on this okay we're still a little slopage but i think what i'm gonna oh no actually that looks really good so the final uh part of this part is actually to get this on some sandpaper oops 320 600 is not bad, but I'm, you know how me and I, my patience, guys. I, I have great patience when it comes to some things, but some things I don't. And if I can just get the material off and get everything where I want it right away, that's going to make me happy. I've never, I don't think I've ever done a stone this, or a bezel this thick. This bezel thickness has got to be 22 gauge. 
I don't know how that's going to hug, but I guess we're going to find out. Okay, friends, we are right here. We're about to put some solder on the inside of this uh, bezel cup. You guys know I like to put a big piece of solder right near the seam. That bezel cup's moving around a little bit, but uh, we'll square it up right before action. Butt it up against the wall of the bezel cup, guys. Medium solder. Okay, now we're going to just kind of use our rotating table to really look at these. And make sure the bezel cup is right where we want it as well. Okay, I think I feel pretty good about that. I think I can go one more. It's always nice to have varying sizes of solder chips in your soldering your solder bowl because you never know when you might need a bigger or smaller piece i hate when i have all nothing but small pieces man i'm like oh really of course of course right when you need a big solder piece you just have little chippies okay here we can go right here i'm just gonna try to get this shit nice all right friends meniscus all the way around friends yes so you know it's really when you're doing heavy back plate and uh, thinner fine silver bezel you want to really focus your heat on the back plate more than the bezel of course you guys already know this I'm sure but really just and if you can raise it up and get your flame a little bit underneath. Okay, guys. So we're just going to let this kind of chill. And then I'll bring you guys back. We'll do some cleanup and see what's up. Alrighty, you health nuts out there. Cat lovers. Look at that meniscus. We have right along the base of that cup. A nice all the way around. And that's what you're looking for. Has not been cleaned yet. And uh, this is going to fit right in there very dandily. Just like that. So the next thing we're going to do, friends, is think about the bale. Okay, friends, well, this is going to be the bale. This is just a piece of spoon that I had from before. And uh, we're going to keep it silverware themed. We're going to go right here. And I'm just going to show you guys how I do this, guys. And this is not how you have to do it. There's lots of great videos out there how to make bales. And uh, some people use a lot of math. Some people don't use math at all. And I'm one of the people that I do not use math at all. So I just kind of get it where I want it with my snippers. This bale uh, thickness is, I'm guessing, about 22 gauge. 22 gauge. I take off less of the material than necessary just to make sure that I have something nice. So I look at that. I can imagine that being folded over. I'm going to look at the tip here, see what fits in there, and that's not very good. So I'm going to have to probably thin this out a little bit. And I think this is probably good for you guys to see how I do it. Because this, you know, if depending on how much of a purist you are, this might be the wrong way for you guys. Um, but you guys will see that this is actually effective. 
And I'm one of the types of people that it's like, I don't get too caught up in uh, dogma. And there's only one right way. There's plenty of right ways, guys. And there's plenty of wrong ways. Now we're now I'm starting. I hope you guys are starting to see that. We're thinking. I'm thinking about. This has to come through for me to be able to solder that to solder solder that together. But um, sometimes what I'll do right here is I'll just go with it. And then at the end, I'll kind of narrow these little skinnies. Instead of making the whole thing skinnier, I'll just narrow narrow the tips. First, I think about which way I want to be the front. And I think I want this to be the front, so I'm going to put this on the back. And on the back of my bales, guys, I always just put a 925. Just so that people know it's not phony baloney. Right, let's sand the inside of this so that we have smoothness when it's time to do our cleanup. This is 600 grit, guys. I have, uh, I don't have any major scratches. I have it relatively smooth. And the, the top, I don't really worry about too much because I have plenty of access to it and it's going to be changed quite a bit. So I'll go like this. Bend it over. I'll get the other side. Bend it over. Now you guys see what I'm saying. We're getting there for the bale. And then in here, sometimes what I'll do is I'll just get a half round file and kind of narrow these down a little bit. But I'm just going to mock it up right now and see if that looks like it's about like, like I would like it. And it is. So we're just going to do a little cleanup on this and shaping in my half round file here. And I'm just filing the insides, uh, the outsides of this, this uh, bale. This look, guys, if you guys can see that. A little bit of a concave on each side. That will allow me to, for, to peek through, to peek through like this, so that I can actually get a solder bond on there. So that's the goal. I need to go just a little bit higher, but I'm getting pretty close. Another option you guys can do is um, just do the back of it. Just do the back so that the front doesn't have that, that look. But if, if, I think if I can do it right, I think it'll be fine. Okay, friends, I think I did pretty good. I did my best. Now, at this stage, friends, what I usually do is kind of make them kind of bend in to kind of kiss each other. You guys see that? Boom. So that that is sitting appropriately on there. So it's pinched in as opposed to being just like a straight like that. A straight kiss in. So that this bale will sit just like such. Boom. Now I'd prefer this bale to be a little wider. So it doesn't it can't choose to be on this side or on this side. See that? If the bale's wider, then it has to stay more centered. So I'm gonna work on this. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna just trim this off just with these little snippers. Trim a little. I made it a little pointy, pointier than I wanted. Let's just look at that and see if this makes any difference. Yeah, that's going to be a lot better. But I'm going to have to figure out how I'm going to get that to peek through. You know I'll figure it out. You know I'll figure it out. I'll probably just have to take a little material off right here. Okay, friends, this is about where we're at. Um, I got a little bit of a wideness right there where I want it. I believe that if that sits, it'll still have a little bit left and right, but it's not so uh, hanging on one side or the other. It's more in the middle. And we have a little bit right here, a little bit of uh, space there to give it the gentle pinch at the end, right when uh, the solder's ready to run. Uh, give it a little pinch. As I often say, I'm not gonna lead you out. Leave you out, friends. I am not gonna leave you out of this party. We're going right here. We're really focusing just on the bale. So I'm gonna put a little bit of flux. What I do is I just let it get hot, but let the bale get hot. As the bale heats up, it becomes a little bit more malleable. So I should be able to pinch it. I'll let a nice pinch. Now I take a piece of solder 
And I'm going to start calling it solder from now on, guys, because uh, it's come to my attention that that's actually the way you're supposed to, what, what it's called, solder. It's like a solder. It's probably like this. I don't know. I don't want to get judged for not, I'm not saying it right. Okay, guys, here we got some solder right in the gap there. Okay. Now we're going to put the heat right there. And I got my pinchers, my tweezers right here for waiting for the opportune time. I'm going to heat more of the bale under there on that bale area. And we're just going to... The bottom of that bale is kind of shielded. I'm going to raise this heat just a little bit, friends. And wait for the response of the solder. We're, we're solder. Focusing right on the tip right there. And we have some response. I gave it a little pinch and I don't know if that worked. The solder really wanted to stick to my tweezers. I want it to stick to the piece. Did that look? I'm not convinced, friends. I'm not convinced. I'm gonna put one little guy right here. Oops. of this get that heat to come up through that hole sometimes it's hard guys getting the heat to really disperse nicely amongst um, along the bale on both sides especially when it's being shielded if you guys get what I'm saying it's getting shielded by that heavy silver that we have right there so I'm really trying to focus right on the tip get a little squeeze I think we got it but it doesn't look very nice that's all right that's that's why you have cleanup friends now we hope to have less cleanup than more but i think we're good actually i'm looking at over here and we're sitting nice so i'm gonna be okay with that we have a little clumpage but that's nothing the little filing can't uh resolve let's just kind of calm this down a little bit let's take a look now this heavy stuff you want to leave it in the water just for a couple seconds longer than you normally would i don't know if this might be a learning lesson right here, guys. I don't know if I got that. That should sit nice. Let's give it a little filage. That clump is kind of keeping it from wanting to go back into the into the loop. I don't know. Let me work on this a little bit. I'm gonna file this down a little bit flatter because you can see there's some clumpage. And then we're gonna see if this is gonna wanna do. I might have to cut this and then redo it because that's not even like hanging right. All right, guys, just to let you in a little bit of what I did to rectify this, I filed, I filed right here uh, to get that nice and doable. And then in this little space I have under here, I just got my little double round pliers and I just went through and just kind of made sure it was nice and roundy on both sides. And now we have, if you guys can see that, we have nice... So we're gonna have a nice fit here. Now the next step for me is to kind of put this in the acid. We're gonna, I'm gonna yellow wheel it uh, with my yellow silicone wheels, or maybe blue, blue silicone wheels. Denatured alcohol, boric acid mixture. We're gonna do one more solder job on this, friends, and it's going to be to tie this to this, this to this, these two together, the points down, and uh, maybe this together, probably not, maybe not. But uh, the key is, guys, is just we don't want anything getting caught and snaggled, snagged. So we're gonna do, uh, we don't want fire scale. We've already gotten this far into the process. Put some solder in the right spots and let it do what it do. I'm working from the back. So if there's solder, a little bit of a solder mess, it's not gonna be, uh, a big deal hurt my feelings ruin my day type of thing you know we don't like to hurt our own feelings friends i know i don't but i inadvertently do from time to time usually because i'm going too fast or i'm careless but uh you know everyone has their everyone of us as artists we have our flaws 
One of my flaws is I move too quickly and I get impatient. I'm very patient when it comes to filing, sawing, doing many of the mundane, boring things that other uh, drillers have a hard time doing. But uh, I have, like I said, I have my weaknesses. Put these tips, get these tips down. The tips are kind of important. I know I want a nice piece right here in the middle. This is just uh, insurance for down the road, friends. We want our pieces to be forever pieces. And uh, we don't want to get a phone call down the road or an email or a text or a message saying, oh, my piece keeps getting snagged on stuff on this particular point in the piece. So we want to make sure that we set ourselves up for success long term. And I'm pretty pretty dang good with, uh, with what I have currently. I'm going to put one, one little dot right here I can't really see in there there we go let's get that to there we go okay I can clean from the back side and that's what we're gonna do I hope you guys got that and I'll bring you guys back all right, friends, this is where we are. This is the piece I have silicone willed. It looks pretty pretty good, guys, in my opinion. And it still has to go through the polishing process and setting the stone after the polishing process. But uh, I used uh, some 400 grit, little rolled them up, and then it got in there. <laughs> and then the bigger one, kind of in the bigger spots, and then really try to work the edges and inside probably in the future guys if you guys try this I would recommend to polish the fork before you bend it now you're where you grip the fork you're gonna have to probably go through and, and clean that but if you if you can polish everything very nicely at least get all the scratch big scratches out before you bend it it's gonna make your life easier uh, that is a tip another tip is to use uh, Use some some bigger pliers, uh, so th or when you'd use regular pliers, just don't slip, guys. Because you can see on this one, like I slipped bad. Look right there, friends. I slipped really bad, and this is gonna have to go probably trashola. You know what I'm saying? And it was because I was trying to do it all of it with these, and as you can see, these don't have any teeth, and the slippage. And then I try to do a little bit of needle nose and then there were some slippage because these don't have teeth. But if you can, in the future, I would go the tip and I would just go a little bit on the tip right there and just roll, roll out, roll out. You saw me how I bent it apart and then I, I rolled in and just try to get it all in one swoop. So if there's one a place where there's going to be teeth marks, it's going to be in one place. You know, there's going to be some little nicks and dings you're going to have to work on, but uh, in the future... I would probably only use these tough ones that I can really grip and then hold on to. So those are some lessons that I learned in this process. Uh, everything else went according to plan, guys. But I did uh, make some errors here. I think I ruined a couple of these. And so this is pretty much it, guys. This is the uh, Quadrupus. Hope you guys enjoyed that adventure. Uh, it, it, was, it wasn't too hard. The hardest part was getting these bends right, but cleaning and, all, and setting this bezel was not too bad as you guys, you guys were there. And so I think this is something that is kind of, that pretty much anybody can do if you have a fork and you want to do something cool with it and have a cool stone and you can set that and you guys, you guys saw that guys. So thank you so much for hanging out and being a part of this jewelry adventure, friends. Uh, it was a lot of fun and I know this is going to be pretty B to the A. So the next time you see this will be in its music video debut. If this video had any 
value to you, please subscribe to my channel or hit like or both. And uh, yeah, definitely hit like on your way out. It really helps the algorithm and gets more people watching the videos. I, I still have a very small channel, even though I'm creeping up on 100 episodes. Getting close to, uh, I think I have about 2,000 subscribers. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. We've made a lot of cool adventures and a lot of cool uh, tips and tricks and information out there, guys. So please uh, stay hydrated out there in the hot summer sun and be good to children and to your loved ones and hug your parents if you're fortunate to still have your parents spend some time with them i hope you guys are staying out of the uh, friend zone and in the end zone guys you know what it is stay sharp stay fresh stay motivated stay creative stay brave and you know who it is it's benny i'm out peace